I'm going to be your tour guide for the next 25 to 30 minutes as we transverse from Escondido, California, all the way to the African Savannah. Now, before we get there, I just want to go over a couple quick safety reminders. In case of a medical emergency, if you're in the second and third cart, you're going to take a look above you and there is a yellow emergency strip. One press, that notifies me of a medical emergency. In that front cart, you'll notice you don't have that emergency strip because you do have this window separating us and that's how you're going to get my attention. Now this strip is for medical emergencies only, so if you lose something along the tram path today, just make note of where we are and let someone know when we get back to the station and we'll have someone go out and try to retrieve it for you. Now on our tram tour today, we're going to be talking about what an adaptation is. And we're going to look at some examples in different animals on ways that they have changed in order to better thrive and survive in their home environment. Now this manifests itself in a few different ways, including color, color patterns, beak shape, horn shape, even behavior. It really all depends on what we see out on the tram path today. Now we're going to be approaching the first animal species that we're going to look at. Coming over on the passenger side, I'm going to pull up and stop for everyone to take a look at. When I am stopped, such as, as I am right now, feel free to stand up to get a better view of the animal. But while I am moving, we do ask that you remain seated. So down in this watering hole is a flamboyance of flamingos, or a group of flamingos. You'll notice that these flamingos are light in color, and that is for a good reason. They are able to reflect that sunlight that, by having those light colored feathers, and that prevents them from overheating. Now color is just one of the examples we're going to be looking at. We're going to continue on because we still have a lot to see. Now before we get to the rest of the animals out on the Africa train path, I want to get a good idea of what everyone's favorite animal is. So I'm going to list some animals that we might be some of you that don't know. The southern, the northern white rhinoceros is functionally extinct. There's only two left in the entire world, and they are both female. So naturally, this species will go extinct. However, at the Rhino Rescue Center, we are working on using the southern white rhinoceros that you are currently looking at as a surrogate mother using a process called in vitro fertilization in order to have a new herd of northern white rhinoceroses and save the species. Now the reason why the rhinoceros is endangered is because they are hunted for their horns. Some people believe that their horns have magical powers. However, their horns are made up of keratin, which is the same material as, their, as our hair and our fingernails. So there's really nothing special about them. Keratin is also what bird beaks are made out of. And over on the driver's side, we're passing the Pelican Island. I only see one pelican right now swimming in the water. That is a Dalmatian pelican. You can tell it's a Dalmatian pelican by that light gray feathers. And it's kind of a scruffy looking bird. I want everyone to take notice of the fact that it too is light in color. Now there is a reason for this, just like the flamingos. They reflect that hot African sun wastewater that the safari has produced, which was then sent to an irrigation plant where it was later turned back into clean and drinkable water and put right back into these water holes that you're seeing today. Now we're going to continue on since there's still a lot to see. As you can see, we're going to talk about why giraffes have such long tongues. Now giraffes have extremely long tongues. For every foot that they are tall, they have an inch long tongue. So an 18 foot giraffe has an 18 inch long tongue. Additionally, if you can see the tongue on this Maasai giraffe, it's kind of a dark purple color. The reason why their tongue is not pink like ours is because they get sunburn on their tongue if it was pink. Because they spend so much time with their tongue out of their mouth, having a dark colored tongue prevents them from getting that sunburn. 
So those are two ways that the East giraffes have changed to better thrive and survive in their home environment. So we're going to continue along. Because of this, the giraffes have adapted. They've changed in order to have an extremely thick saliva that coats the thorns and prevents them from stabbing the giraffe as it chews them and swallows them. Additionally, they also have a hard upper palate, so the roof of their mouth is extremely hard and impenetrable from thorns. I'm going to pull up and stop alongside these other two Maasai giraffes. The one on the left is our male Maasai giraffe, and on the right is another female. The male Maasai giraffe is an example of an 18-foot giraffe. He is about as tall as the adult giraffe gets. All right, we're going to continue on since we still have a lot to see. If you keep looking on the driver's side, you're going to see a dark colored buffalo. Those are cave buffalo. Now the cave buffalo is dark in color, so it absorbs. The reason why they have that black and white face is to intimidate predators from coming after them. They have two big black spots on their ears that mimic predator eyes. Like us as humans and lions, our eyes are on the front of the face. For prey animals, their eyes are on the side of the face. So by trick, once we reach the top, however, I will be making a stop so you'll be able to see these beautiful round antelopes. Yeah, those are cool. Now what I want everyone to make note of is the color of these red antelopes. They're kind of a reddish color. Once we get to the top, you're going to be able to look out on the passenger side and see the female herd of rose antelopes sitting down along the water's edge. I'm going to come up and stop in just a moment so everyone's able to get a good view and take some pictures. Now on the island underneath that tree, and it too is reddish in color. Towards the far right side of the habitat, towards the back near the fence, there are some more antelope out there as well and they're all that reddish color now the reason why they are this reddish color is because predators have a hard time distinguishing between red and green colors so if you take a picture of any of these animals and you put a black and white filter on it because of this when they come together in these large herds the stripes are very confusing and it makes it hard for a predator to spot one out in a group of zebra than it is to just see one singular zebra. Now that's the what I was talking about, about hunting. Predators will stalk their own the backyard, called the Southwest Conservation Hub. For my Southern California residents, you can do your part by helping this conservation hub with doing things such as planting, planting native plant species such as the native milkweed. It supports the migratory monarch butterfly population that comes through this area every summer. Now over on the driver's side, under the shade of this tree and at the feeding trough, there is some water buck, the ellipsin water buck to be exact. I'm going to come edge up just a little bit more and then I'll come to a stop so you can take pictures. Now the ellipse and water buck have a funny color pattern on their butts. Take a look at their butts. Kind of looks like a toilet bowl ring on their butts. Now just like the Somali wild asses, which we saw earlier, they have follow me marks too. Their follow me marks are that toilet bowl marking. They look for the toilet bowl ring as they traverse through the African savanna. Additionally, ellipse and water buck have changed over time to better thrive and survive in their home environment because they're really smelly. Now take a look over on the passenger side because we're approaching the scimitar horned oryx, which I said is a rare sight to see, but right now they're over in our North African habitat. I'm going to pull up and stop for them as they are a very rare sight, especially at the safari park. This is where the myth of the unicorn came from. 
Some of our horned oryxes only get one set of horns for their entire life. So if one breaks off, that's all they get. Which is why we believe this is where that unicorn myth is coming from. Additionally, a little fun story and success story about these scimitar horned oryxes. For a while in their natural habitat in Africa, they were extinct. They are only found in zoos. But over the course of the last 50 years that we've been open, we have had a successful breeding program where over 600 scimitar horned oryxes have been born here, some of which have been reintroduced to the southern white rhinoceroses in a way that they've changed over time to better thrive and survive in their home environment is by having padded feet. And rhinoceroses are over 2,000 pounds when they're adults. When they run, you can't hear them at all. Additionally, it is also baby season here at the safari park, and I see three babies out there. The first one I'm going to talk about, since we're on the topic of rhinos, is currently in between Mama right now. That is Kamaria. She is almost a year old. She was born here in August. Her mother right behind her is named Kianga. Kamaria means moon in Swahili, and Kianga means sun. So together, they are the sun and the moon. I'm just going to sit here for a little while longer before we continue on because on the left side of those rhinoceros, for those of you that follow us on social media, you might be aware that there are two new baby common giraffes out in this habitat. Yeah. They were born here in February of 2022, only about two months old right now. They spent their time together off guest view for the first two months. And they've grown quite attached to each other. Some might say they're besties. I'm gonna pull up and stop so you can take a picture all of the babies. Kianga and Kamaria are headed over towards the right. And the two babies are currently nestled in between those palm trees. These are the common giraffe species. We saw the Maasai giraffe before, the ones we're looking at right now. Yeah, <laughs> 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 